What is up everybody? Welcome back. Thanks so much for clicking on today's video. And today I am down here with Kevin from Chichi Anglers right there. He's in the background throwing the cast net. We have been flounder fishing pretty much all morning and it has been slow. I think we've caught four undersized. One of them was probably right at 14 and a half, 15 inches, but obviously we can't take that home. He has a couple mold on the ground. I'll show you those right now. A little bit bigger mullet. This is a perfect size for really anything. This guy right here is a little bit bigger, but he'll still work for a nice redfish. So we're going to continue to the cast net and then we'll head over there and see what we can hook into. Y'all make sure to stick with it and stay tuned. All right, guys, so we just hopped in at the ferry landing and there is nobody out here today, which is awesome. Usually it's pretty crowded especially when it's getting close to flounder season. So, pretty nice, we have it all to ourselves. I haven't waited here in a couple years. Every time I would come, the tide would be too high and it would be up over my waders. So I just stopped waiting here, but today the tide is good and we're just gonna be throwing a 1 4 ounce jig head. And right now we're starting with a pink gulp. And that's the plan. We're gonna see if we can catch some of these flounder. I anticipate a lot of little flounder and hopefully we'll catch a couple keepers mixed in. But this time of year, those keepers are typically around the 15, 16 inch mark. It's a lot of males right now, but we're gonna see if we can catch some. All right, y'all. Well, right after I turned the camera off and said that, about two casts later and I hooked one, a little potato chip. But right, there we go. That's a good start right there. Let's us know there's some fish here. And yeah, fish number one, let's get a release. Hopefully we'll be able to find a bigger one than that to take home. Now, a lot of times during the flounder run, y'all, where you catch one flounder, there's usually a lot more around it. For example, if we pull up to one of these docks and we're fishing one of these docks, we don't catch anything. And then we move over to another one and you catch one. I recommend staying there and, and casting around that same area where you just caught one because a lot of time they'll be stacked. And some of these docks will hold like 10 flounder on each dock and then another dock will be completely dead. So we just caught that one here. We're going to keep fishing around it and see if we can pull some more off of it. Well, I said that it was shallower today, but I stand corrected. I just got wet up over the waders twice and we can't make it any farther than this without going over our waders. So we're gonna head back to where we started to where I caught that flounder and see if there's any more hanging around. All right, so we just pulled up to our next fishing spot of the day. It's later in the afternoon. Uh, we haven't been having much luck today, a bunch of undersized ones, but Kevin just caught himself a keeper flounder right here and we've only been fishing here for maybe about 10 minutes i caught a dink on like my second or third cast i think so i grabbed the camera and we're gonna see if we can catch a big one all i'm using is a 1 4 ounce jig head and a white gulp shrimp i caught that little one on it a minute ago so i rehooked it upside down it doesn't really matter we're gonna see if we can catch something we stopped at the gas station picked up some gulp it's hard to find gulp this time of year y'all come into the flounder run it sells out at Academy and all the other stores, but we stopped at a gas station and they had nuclear chicken, which is one of the best flounder colors. They had a white swimming mullet, which is also a very popular, very good flounder lure. And then they had this white gulp shrimp, which I have been using for the first time ever this year for flounder. I used to think these things suck because they have no action. They're pretty much just a stick bait, but we've been killing them on them the last couple weeks. And they last a lot longer than a curly tail. So we'll see if we can get on a keeper right here. I will say Kevin caught that one in a place where we had been casting already. He switched over colors because he broke off and he put on a new penny gulp, which is an amazing color as well. And he hooked that guy. So you never really know what's gonna work. I really don't think color matters a ton, but sometimes the fish do seem to eat certain colors over others. And the way I'm working this guy is I'm just casting out, letting it sink down. This is like a big flat right here. And then I'm just holding my rod tip down and giving it a little pops like that. You could drag it, but since this doesn't have any action, I like to give it action. So we just give it a little pops and it kind of hops it around on the bottom. I got some sort of fish here. I think it is a sand trout and it is. Very common catch whenever you're flounder fishing. Sand trout also live in a lot of the same areas flounder do. Very abundant all throughout the bay. They're fun little fish to catch. They always keep it interesting. Whenever you're having a bad day, you can always count on getting a bite from a sand trout. Well, it's not the targeted species, it's better than catching nothing in my opinion. Cast it out, let my lure hit the bottom. 
I just recorded that last little sand trout and I hooked up. This was like a decent fish. What is that? Bro, is that a Galson Bay record sized lizard fish? That thing felt huge when he bit. What an ugly fish, y'all. Look, this is a lizard fish. They're crazy looking. They feel weird. And look at those teeth on them. Razor teeth. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy on hook, get him back. We don't wanna mess with this thing. Okay, so really quick, I wanna go over the rig that I'm using because I just broke off on that single rig gulp. So now I tied on a tandem rig. Probably the most popular way to flounder fish is a tandem rig with gulp. Now you can use two jig heads or you can do like what I did and put a heavy jig head on bottom. This is a 3 8 uh, You can get away with the 1 4 as well. And then just do a normal hookup top. On this rig right here, I have some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. We go down to our bottom jig head. Then we have a little loop knot right here. Kind of like a single drop rig with our other hook on it and our two pieces of gulp. Now whenever I do a tandem rig, I like to put my darker gulp on bottom. So this is a nuclear chicken. It's gonna go on bottom because that to me is just in some darker or dirtier water or skipping across the mud. And then I put my lighter colored gulp on top, which today is this pearl white or glow. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's the lighter gulp. If I was using chartreuse, I put chartreuse on bottom, white on top, pink on bottom, white on top, uh, new penny on bottom, chartreuse on top, anything. Y'all understand what I'm getting at? Darker colors on bottom, lighter color on top. That's just what I like to do. And then this is also a great way to see what those fish are eating more of. If you're catching the fish on only this one, the nuclear chicken, then you can switch both of them to that and double your chances. Or if you're catching them on only the white, you can switch both of them to that and double your chances. But that's how we're gonna do it right here. And all we do with this is we just cast it out really easy. Let it sink down. And then we just drag it back, just like that. And we're just waiting to feel the thumb. Simple as that, y'all. All right, y'all, I got a little one here. We're just kind of dragging him along. Maybe he wasn't little because I just got broken off. He ate my top gulp. And I'm broken off. Wow, maybe that wasn't a little one. I cast in the same spot at least 10 times. I just sent it back over there. I got tapped. Actually, my first real thump of flounder season. It was a hard just... And I dragged him and he didn't feel too heavy. Went to set the hook and completely broke me off. So maybe Kevin can toss over there and catch him. And maybe we can get those lures back. So I just lost two hooks and two good lures. Oh well. All right, we're gonna pull out our secret weapon here. Oh, there's still a live one. So we've been using gulp, but we did in fact cast that some finger mold earlier. Here's a nice lively one. I didn't even think any of them were alive anymore. They've all been dead in the bucket. Doesn't matter if they're dead, they'll still work, but we're just gonna take it. We're gonna hook it through the head and we're gonna go back over there and see if we can catch that same flounder. And that did not kill him. He's still moving around. Perfect bait right there. Let's go see if we can get that same flounder to bite again on this nice, perfect live finger mullet. That is flounder candy. All right, we're back in the same place. I just lost that one. That would really make my day if we could catch that fish. Just bouncing this mullet along this wall, around all these rocks down here. Hopefully it'll come up for it. If I actually hooked him real good, then he's probably not going to eat again. But you never know. I didn't fight him at all, so he could possibly come back. I can feel him chewing on the bait. We're going to let him eat. He just dropped it. There is no way. He took my mold and dropped it. I felt that fish go thunk and start chewing. I grabbed another flounder, walked over here, and I was bouncing in the same spot where he just ate it. And I just saw this guy come up off the bottom and eat it. Oh yeah, he's on there. I'm gonna step back. That was insane. I saw him come right up off the bottom. Let's go ahead and get this hook set. Nice one, nice big flounder. That's another keeper right there. Let's go, dude. That was an insane turn of events. I casted out my gulp, got bit right here, set the hook, broke off. I just went and retied, grabbed a jig head and a live finger mullet, put in that same spot, thought he wasn't going to bite again, ended up getting bit, and then he uh, he took my finger mullet off the hook. Like I was just letting him eat, and the next thing I know there was no weight and my finger mullet was just gone, and my hook was there. So then I went back, grabbed another finger mullet, a dead one, dropped it in the same spot. As soon as I dropped it down, I saw him come up and grab it and lay back down. Let him eat, he completely swallowed that hook, and that is an awesome keeper flounder. That's about a... 16 and a half inch, I'd say. Maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. My first keeper of the day after being out here all day. 
Hey, let's go throw that thing in the cooler and try to catch another. Got myself my one fourth ounce jig head again. I had to retie because that one got all messed up and the fire pretty much swallowed it. And got my dead little finger mold right there, just hooked through the head. Perfect little setup. No need to make it harder on yourself, guys. A lot of people want to use a Carolina rig, all this special stuff. You absolutely can use that, but this works and it's very simple. So let's try to catch one. So it is the next day. We have our nice 16 and a half, 17 inch flounder right here. The only keeper of the day, but hey, one is better than none. And we're gonna go ahead and clean this guy up. And what we're gonna be doing is just your typical stuffed flounder recipe. Let's go ahead and start by scaling it because that is the first step. So right here we have our fish scaler and we're just gonna run this backwards on the fish. You've seen me do this a hundred times if you've been watching the channel. It's pretty simple. And I actually have a whole video dedicated to how to fillet a flounder for stuffing. It's like an eight minute video. I'll have it linked under this one if you wanna go check it out. It's gonna be in a lot more detail because right now I'm just gonna do it pretty fast um, so I don't take up too much of y'all's time on this video. But we're gonna finish scaling this thing up and then we'll move on to the next step. Just make sure you scale the top and the bottom and scale all the way up to the head because we're gonna eat all of this stuff right here too. So all the way down from the tail, all around the outside and all the way up to the head. And once you do that, then you're ready to start cutting it open. We got our flounder completely scaled and now what we're going to do is we're just going to take our knife and we're going to make a cut right down this middle line on the back. So we're just going to poke that in there and cut that down. What we're doing right now is just cutting right on top of the backbone. Just like that. Make sure we cut all the way down. Then we're going to go up here and we're going to cut around the stomach or into the stomach, doesn't really matter. And then up around the head like that. And you can leave the head on whenever you stuff flounder. I personally don't. I just go ahead and cut it all the way off uh, so we just have the body. But what we'll do is we'll take our knife and we'll pick whichever side we want to start on and we'll just cut out from there. Just like this. And whenever you're doing this, you just want to make sure that you don't cut all the way down because if you cut too far, then you're going to poke through the edge right here and then all your stuffing is going to fall out. And at that point, you might as well just go ahead and fillet it. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, right there. So I missed a little bit of meat right on the backbone, but no big deal. We got the majority of it, so that's all right. So next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and finish cutting the head off right here. Make your cut, grab your head, twist it, and it comes completely off. Boom. So now that we have that done, the next step is you take your knife, and you're gonna go under these bones right here on the inside of the filet, okay? There's a few different ways you can stuff a flounder. Some people just fillet it, and then they put the fillets on bottom, stuffing, and then fillet on top. Some people do the pocket method, where they leave this hole like this. They don't cut down the backbone. They just stick the knife in here and go around. And then there's just this way, which is the most common, which is where you open it up, and just a traditional uh, debone flounder for stuffing. So we're gonna take our knife, run it right up in here. This is the hardest part, but it's really not hard at all. And you see how you can see the knife down in here? That's what you want. You can see that knife, that means that you're cutting right on that bone not wasting any meat. And then we're just gonna cut out basically just what we did, but from inside the fish. And that's why it can be a little tricky. We're gonna go back this way towards the backbone. Okay, then we're gonna take it and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Once you get that done, the next step is to take a pair of scissors, or this is like game shears right here. They work way better for cutting through bone than scissors, but scissors will do the job. And we're just going to go right on the edge of the fillet and we're going to cut this backbone all the way out as close as we can get it to the fins. That's going to leave the minimum amount of bones in here. Okay, once we cut that, we're just gonna finish our cut on the bottom right here, getting it away from that backbone. 
lift it up and then start just cutting away like that. Making sure that we cut super shallow so we don't cut down through the skin. We're basically just finishing our fillet job. See right there, I nicked it a little bit, that's fine. Just gonna keep on going and do our best. Got a little hole in the flounder, but it'll be all right. We'll go ahead and cut that off. And that right there is a ready to go, ready to be stuffed boneless flounder. We're just gonna clean it out, spray it out with water real quick, make sure there's no more guts in there, and then we're good to go. But look at that, perfect. Two fillets, two fillets, folded up and ready to be stuffed. We'll see y'all in the kitchen in just a minute to cook this thing up. Let's go ahead and get right into making this stuffed flounder. This is a really simple recipe that only has a few ingredients. So of course we have our deboned flounder right here. Y'all just saw me do that out on the flay table. And then to make the stuffing, it's just some celery and onion, some crab meat, you can use shrimp or crab. We just prefer to use the crab meat in this one. Some breadcrumbs, these are Italian breadcrumbs. And then of course some butter. And the only other thing you're gonna need is your choice of seasoning. I like to do Cajun seasoning, paprika, and some garlic powder. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take our produce and saute it down in a little bit of butter. While this is sauteing down, let's go ahead and get our fish ready to stuff. So we're just gonna start out by seasoning it. I like to season the outside as well as the inside of the fillets. So we'll start with our Cajun seasoning right here and we'll just give a nice dose of that everywhere. Make sure you get the bottom side as well. Then we're gonna open it up and get the inside of these fillets. On top of that, we always like a little bit of extra garlic, so we're gonna go in with the garlic powder right here. About that much. And then we're going to go in with our hot paprika. This is a secret ingredient right here. And what I like to do with this is put it just on the outside. It's gonna give it a really good color and a very nice flavor and just a little bit of heat. So we'll go in on the outside that. Same thing on the bottom. That's perfect. Now as soon as those vegetables are done sauteing, we'll start mixing them together with the crab meat and the breadcrumbs and then we'll be ready to stuff it and throw it in the oven. Like I said, this is a really simple recipe. It takes about 30 minutes to cook and dinner's ready. The onions are turning translucent. The celery is getting soft. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this off and that is done. Now we're gonna let that cool for just a minute while we start putting together the rest of the stuffing. So first thing we're gonna do is take our crab meat. This is half a pound of lump crab meat. You can use the claws as well. We just picked up the lump though. Tastes just the same. Throw that in there. Then we're going to take our breadcrumbs and we're just gonna eyeball this. We're gonna sprinkle some on top. That should be good right there. We'll probably have to add a little bit more, but for now, that should be good. And one thing I forgot to mention was an egg. We use an egg to hold everything together. This is our binder. So the egg and the breadcrumbs holds that crab meat and that onion, that celery together. We're gonna take our egg, crack it in there, the whole thing. Now we're just gonna stir that together. All right, let's go ahead and dump our sauteed onion and celery in here. And if you wanted to, you could do bell peppers as well, but I just like onion and celery. I think it's perfect. And this was about half an onion and about three or four sticks of celery, I believe. Get all that butter that was in that pan drained in there and that's gonna help keep that stuffing moist and make sure that, that flounder doesn't dry out. Now we're just gonna mix this together and it is as easy as that, y'all. That is some um, done stuffing, ready to be put in the flounder and thrown in the oven. Okay, let's go ahead and start stuffing our flounder. And this is the fun part, guys. This is where we get to start getting our hands dirty. So we're going to open this up and now one thing that I really like to do is take some spray butter. This is completely optional, but I always do this every time I make a stuffed flounder. You could obviously just take some butter and melt it down and rub it on the fish, but this is just really easy. So we take some spray butter and spray all those fillets. Get a nice little coating on there. And we're gonna go ahead and start adding our stuffing. We're just gonna take it, start laying it in here. And it never takes as much as I think it's going to make. I always make like four times too much stuffing, but that's all right. Lay it in there, pat it down. And we're just gonna take our fish, fold it back over the best we can. 
The last thing I do before I put it in the oven, take a couple pads of butter, put them on top. As this cooks, this is going to melt down in there. It's going to keep it super moist. Put all that good butter flavor in there, and it's going to be absolutely delicious. Let's go ahead and throw this thing in the oven. We have the oven set at 350. I'm going to throw that on the top rack, and we're going to set our timer for 25 minutes. It's going to take anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes to fully cook. All we're looking for is for that fish to get nice and flaky. So we'll see you all in 25 minutes to check it out. The timer just went off. It's been going for 25 minutes. Let's take it out and take a look. Ooh, and it's looking good. First thing I noticed though is that it is a little bit dried out. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply a little bit more of this spray butter or paint some melted butter on it if you have it, all over it. And this is a very important step because this fish is not done cooking. It needs probably an additional five minutes and then it'll be done, but you don't want it to dry out in the cooking process. We're gonna set our timer for five more minutes. And when that goes off, we'll be ready to eat. So we'll see y'all then. Well, here it is, y'all. A fresh stuffed flounder straight out of Galveston Bay. Let's go ahead and take a slice out of it and see how good it looks. And y'all take a look at that. Perfectly cooked, flaky white meat. I already know this is gonna be absolutely delicious. We got our crab meat stuffed flounder perfectly cooked. We got some pasta salad, some green beans, everything we need. Hey, I don't even think I need to try this out for you guys. You already know it's gonna be good, but I do wanna say thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you put inside of your stuffed flounder or your favorite way to cook flounder. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. If you are like always guys, I thank you so very much. That's it for right now. Until next time, peace.